Hey, what's up? I'm Ines Zalea from ToleratedCinematics.com and today I will be showing you how to create a really simple and easy cinema graph. For those that don't know what a cinema graph is, this is where you combine a photograph together with a video. It's very unique and not a lot of people are using it right now, that's why it stands out so much. It's something in between, it's something different, especially on Instagram where you see all of these images and when you come across on a cinema graph, it's going to grab your audience attention and yeah, it's just a really magical way of showing your photographs. So how do we actually create a cinema graph? We are going to be using Adobe Premiere Pro together with Photoshop to create our cinema graph, but you can also do this in Photoshop entirely or using other video editing softwares combined with Photoshop. And yes, yeah, so let's have a look on how to create one. So basically when you are taking a picture you just point your camera to your subject and you take a picture. But this is going to be a little bit different this time. So instead of taking a picture try to find a composition using your camera on a tripod. So make sure that your camera is steady and it doesn't move at all so try to use a tripod or put it on some books or something. And instead of taking a picture we're actually going to film something but steadily. Just keep in mind that you're going to be filming a scene where you want everything to stand still except one thing in your scene that is moving. So you can do whatever, but just try to um, yeah, keep this in mind before making your scene. For example, I played me using my LP player. So we have a turning LP and my hand is adjusting the volume, but my hand is completely still. I kept this in mind, you can go for a waterfall where only the water is flowing and the leaves of the trees are just still, or someone that's standing outside and the hair is like all moving around but the face is actually still. This is a little bit more complicated but you can do whatever so just try to find something that you really like. If you want to follow along with this tutorial using the exact same footage as I do I will put a link in the description so you can follow along and get the idea on how to create a cinema graph. So I recorded my scene here it's a simple straightforward shot on a tripod video and what I want to do is import my video in Adobe Premiere Pro so let's have a look. Here we are in Adobe Premiere Pro and as you can see I imported my video which you can download in the description. I will drag this into a new composition. So my video if we go to the sequence settings we are going to see that it's 24 fps and I made it just HD so that's 1280 by 720. Of course you can go higher I just thought uh, sending this online it's going to be a little bit easier if the resolution is a little bit lower. So I will click OK and zoom onto my timeline here so I get my entire video on my screen. So as you can see if we're going to play this we just have a video. So what I want to do actually is I'm going to click away so nothing is selected, hold alt and click on my audio layer and just delete that because we don't need any audio in our cinema graph. Then I'm going to click on my video itself and I'm going to hold alt and drag it on top. So what we want to do is actually trim it a little bit. So let's say we are going to start our video right here. So we're going to take everything or actually a little bit farther away. So my hand is in position and we're going to trim this all the way to my playhead. And I'm going to drag this at the beginning of my timeline. So we just have this right here. And then at the end, what I want to do is actually find a spot where this is looping. So that's going to be right here. Then I'm going to take my second layer and actually drag it all the way over. So now this is what we're seeing. We can toggle off this layer just to see how it looks. It's not perfectly in position, but as you can see, we're actually trying to match up this label of my LP here. We're seeing that it's doing a pretty good job. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want a loop. So um, yeah, it actually starts here and I want it to end here. So what I will do is actually cut my video right here delete the last part. Now I'm going to do something very simple. I'm going to take this layer and I'm going to drag it backwards just a little bit. And the reason why we can do this is because we actually trimmed it at the beginning. So now what I will do is go to effects, video transition, go to dissolve and use it cross dissolve and put it on top of my video and just make it a lot shorter like so. And now it's just going to fade into my other video if we're actually going to enable that layer. But we can see that it's doing a very simple cross dissolve. It's very well barely noticeable uh, on the LP and that's what we want. So now we have a loopable video if we're going to check the complete end here. So this is where it's going to end. So we're going to 
hit C on the keyboard, click over here and delete the last part. So basically what we're trying to do is making sure that our last frame right here is going to be one frame before our first frame. So this is almost the next animation as right here. So to just show you an example, if we're going to make this one frame longer, we're actually going to see that it's going to be exactly the same as the beginning frame right here. So that's what we want, just one frame backwards. So yeah, else we're going to see that last frame double at the beginning of this timeline and the loop isn't going to be super smooth. So yeah, just keeping this in mind, we have our loop already. So we still have a video and we still have to fix that. So what we are going to do next is we're going to take our first layer again, hold Alt and drag this on top on a third layer. Now we're going to find a position where I like my hand positioning and I will right click, go to frame hold options right here and source time code. We're going to change that to playhead and click OK. And now we actually have a completely still frame. So what we want to do is actually we're going to mask out my hand. So this is the only thing not moving, but we actually want to see the layer below it. So what we can do is click on that layer, go to the effects controls and go to the opacity right here and you're going to see a little pen tool. We actually want to zoom out a little bit so we can do this a little bit better. So maybe 25%. And now we can actually click on that pen tool and draw a simple mask around my arm. If this plant would be moving, you can make it a little bit bigger and close it right here. The feather, we can change this to 50. So we have a nice transition from the one scene to the other. You can even go a little bit higher if you want to, but I wouldn't exaggerate. So you're actually not making, uh, well, it's not leaking into the animation right here. So change it back to fit. And if we're going to play our video, we're going to see that our arm is completely still, but our LP is playing. So now what we want to do is go all the way till the end right here and press O on the keyboard on the last frame. So right here. Okay, perfect. Now what you can do as well is go to the project manager and create a new adjustment layer. We're going to click OK and drag this on top of our video like so. We're actually going to um, decrease the saturation and maybe go into the basic color grading and add a little bit of contrast. Uh, take away some of the highlights here or whites and we're going to play with the contrast a little bit more and increase the black so we have a little bit of this fade. You can go ahead and play around with this. Uh, it's really fun to use here. Uh, play maybe a little bit with the temperature. And there we go. So now we have a black and white video. This looks a little bit better in my opinion. Then we can go to file, export and export media. Here we can uncheck the audio because we are not using any audio. And as you can see, the resolution is perfect. The frame rate is 24. Make sure that your frame rate is as low as possible because I exported one of my videos at 50 FPS trying to make a GIF out of this, but it gave me a lot of errors when posting online. So keeping your frame rates as low as possible, it's also going to decrease the size of the actual GIF and 24 is just perfectly smooth. So just, yeah export at low frame rate. Okay, so I'm going to export it right here. I'm going to replace this, click OK, export, yes. Now in Photoshop, what we want to do is click on that video and open that video up. And there we go. And we're going to get a timeline automatically. If we're going to play this, we're going to see our video like so. And yeah, everything looks all right. All you have to do is go to file, export, and save for web legacy. And here what you want to do is make sure that you're exporting a GIF right here. So make sure that's GIF. And apart from that, all these settings, you can just copy them from me. For the animation, make sure that you change the looping options to forever. And there we go. So we can preview it right here. Looks perfect. We can close it. You can see right here, it's going to be seven megabytes. And depending on whatever footage you're using, that's going to be different. Try to keep this as low as possible. And this you can do with a lower frame rates, lower resolution of the video and lower length of the video. So if you can keep it even, yeah, um, shorter than this video would be ideal as well. So we'll save this as a cinemagraph for the tutorial. So we have an LP playing here and we're going to save this. 
And there you go, it's that simple, you have your cinema graph, you can do a bunch of cool things with this, and yeah, if you want, you can even go and dive into After Effects and start adding effects to it, and that's for another tutorial that I'm actually planning to do, but yeah, awesome stuff, I love cinema graphs, especially if you're uh, onto the Instagram game, you can really do a game changer here, so I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, give this video a like, and also subscribe to the channel for more, and definitely, definitely check out our website. We have a bunch to offer, just check it out with link in the description, motion graphics templates and much more. Uh, so yeah, apart from that, I hope to see you in the next one and goodbye.